بسم الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. How's everybody doing? Alhamdulillah, fantastic. So today we're continuing Surah Mursalat, ayah number 35, in which Allah Ta'ala says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ هَذَا يَوْمُ لَا يَنْطِقُونَ This is a day they will not speak. Now Allah Ta'ala is talking about Judgment Day. There was already a bunch of scenes of Judgment Day talking about the smoke and the hellfire and how it will create this shade and it won't benefit and how it'll come out in three columns and there was various very scary descriptions of Judgment Day. Now Allah Ta'ala is specifying they will not speak this day. Now this is this poses a bit of a question. How do we reconcile this verse with the fact that the disbelievers are reported to speak on Judgment Day in different ayat? Allah Ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ الظَّالِمِينَ مَعْذِرَتُهُمْ The day their excuses will not benefit the wrongdoers. Well, you could say that there are excuses in, in dunya. But anyway, anyway this is, it could also be in akhirah. Allah also says, ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عِنْدَ, رَبِّ, uh, عند ربكم تختصمون. Then indeed you, on the day of resurrection, before your Lord, will dispute. So this is actually more direct. It says, in front of your Lord, the, the people will be disputing. Right? So this is, uh, people will talk on Judgment Day. Also, also Allah Ta'ala says that the disbelievers will try to give the excuses even though they did shirk in this dunya. They will say, قَالُوا وَاللَّهِ رَبِّنَا مَا كُنَّا مُشْرِكِينَ they will say, by Allah, our Lord, we were not of those who did shirk. <laughs> they will just flat out deny, straight up. No, no, I never did. No, it never happened. Never, never. It's like, subhanAllah, you had a whole life of shirk. No, no, never did it. SubhanAllah, as if that's going to work out in their favor. Uh, furthermore, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَا يَكْتُمُونَ اللَّهَ حَدِيثًا And they will not conceal from Allah a single statement. Now again, you could say this refers to the statements of dunya, but it could also mean in the akhirah, nothing will be concealed. Uh, and Allah knows best. And then finally, وَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ So this is a little bit more straightforward and more direct. And they will approach one another. Uh, or you could say, يَتَسَاءَلُونَ could be asking, questioning each other or blaming each other. Like trying to know it was his fault and so on and so forth. So then basically what we're trying to establish is that it seems that on Judgment Day there will be discussions going on. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, هَذَا يَوْمُ لَا يَنْتِخُونَ They won't speak on that day. How do we reconcile all this? So there's a number of answers. Number one, Judgment Day is 50,000 years long as Allah mentions in Surah Ma'arij. So different periods seem to have different descriptions. In other words, there may be a debate period where people go back and forth. They, there may be an inquisition period where they are asked specific questions. There may be a defense period. And then of course, once the verdict is in, there's no speaking after that. And actually this is supported by the fact that a moment ago, if we look at uh, earlier in the Surah, uh, the same, very same, same surah, Surah Mursalat, ayah number 29, Allah said, In Proceed, go to what you used to deny. So this seems to be the case that the judgment period, the uh, you know, court case time is already over. Now that the verdict is, verdict is in, now go. Now, in tariqu, go, go to this fire. And then at that point, Allah says, Hada yomula yantiqu. Now, from this point on, there's no talking. The verdict's already done. So you're done. So that's one interpretation that seems very valid, especially looking at the broader context, and Allah knows best. Then the second uh, uh, position is that this verse could imply that they won't be able to speak as they normally do. In other words, it's not that they can't speak at all, it's that you won't be able to speak like you typically speak. And so the question is, how do they usually speak? They're accustomed to lying. They're, they're used to lying as they talk. And the point is that they're going to be stuck with the truth on Judgment Day. They won't be able to lie on that day. So imagine that. Imagine you, imagine, hopefully not us, but imagine a person who is used to, you know, uh, omitting certain facts or exaggerating certain facts or, you know, uh, you know, graying the lines, blurring the lines. And, you know, he's very good at slick talk and getting out of certain situations. And in this particular instance, that ability is completely robbed from him. Nope, just the truth only. You can't even start the conversation without, if it's false, it'll be eh, just immediately. Can't do it, right? Imagine that. And point number three is what? Another possibility is what? This could be understood to mean that not a single word they will speak will benefit them. So it's not saying that they won't be able to speak at all. It's that they will not be able to speak of any benefit. Either they're digging themselves deeper based on their testimony or they're completely silent. Either, you know, either nothing or it's getting worse. So nothing you say is benefiting. Meaning, their, sp their speech will not change the outcome. And this is the, the fact that Allah Ta'ala does mention in Surah Qaf, ayah number 29, Ma The word will not change with me. Allah Ta'ala says, look, it's not like you're going to change my decree. I know, Allah's al-alim, he knows everything. 
Al Hassan al Basri, he says regarding this ayah, This is the day that they won't speak with any evidence. It doesn't mean they won't speak at all, it means they won't speak with any good evidence to defend themselves. Al Razi has a very, I like this opinion just because I find it funny. He says, It's like when somebody speaks without benefit, what do you tell them? You say, Bro, you haven't said nothing. Like, he, he, of course the guy said something, right? But when the guy talk, 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 bla blabbers on and on, and he hasn't said of anything of benefit, what do you say to him? Bro, you're not saying anything, right? Technically he's saying something, but it's just not worth anything. So he says, نَظِيرُهُ مَا يُقَالُ لِمَنْ ذَكَرَ كَلَامًا غَيْرَ مُفِيدٍ مَا قُلْتَ شَيْءٍ مَا قُلْتَ شَيْءٍ It's like when somebody speaks nonsense, so the response is, you haven't said anything at all. Anyway, a, a fourth uh, explanation or reconciliation of this is what? Given that the previous section uh, mentioned the horrors of seeing hellfire, it's possible that they're just frozen at that time. So at, at this moment when hellfire is brought forth and they get to see the horrors of hellfire, which we talked about in length in, in previous uh, classes just recently, it's possible that they're frozen with, free, with fear, completely sp speechless and petrified. As Abu Uthman rahim, uh, uh, said, They'll be silenced by the terrifying scene and the shame of their sins. So that's what is silencing them. It's not that they can't talk, but it's so they're just completely silenced. Anyway, uh, it's yomu with a dhamma, or it could also be read as hada yoma. It could be mansub. And this is mansub al zarfiya. So what is the reason? Some say because of an omission. Yeah, this is one interpretation that it's basically saying this uh, which has been related upon you is happening on that day. So that's sort of the implied omission and Allah knows best. So it could be hadha yomu and just the sentence is as is or hadha yoma and there's a there's a like a sort of implied extra sentence. But at the end of the day, they both kind of imply the same thing and Allah knows best. What's interesting is that this is Surah 77. Surah 77 is Surah Mursalat. The very next Surah also has a scene on Judgment Day where nobody can speak, or they can't speak anything that's false, or they only, can only speak with permission. This is the very next Surah is 78, which is Surah Naba. Allah says what? رَبِّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَ الرَّحْمَنِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِنْهُ خِطَابًا Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them, the most merciful. They possess not from Him the authority to speak they have no ability to speak on that day. And then Allah says, The day that a ruh, the spirit, and the angels will stand in rows, they will not speak except for one who the most merciful, Ar Rahman, permits. And whatever they say will be correct. It has to be 100%, 100% correct. So again, you have this sort of dual concept of one, you cannot speak, but except if it's the truth. You have to be able to speak truthfully on that day. The next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says what? So now we're moving on to, uh, going back again to Surah Mursalat, and we're taking a look at ayah number 36. Nor will, be, nor will it be permitted for them to make any excuse. So just again, I know I, sometimes I go into these details, I hope it benefits you guys, but uh, uh, why isn't there an extra la? You would expect, وَلَا يُؤْذَنُ لَهُمْ فَلَا يَعْتَذِرُونَ That they will not be given permission, nor will they have the ability to make excuses, nor will they make any excuses. The extra la is understood because the fa automatically connects it to the beginning of the sentence. And furthermore, uh, we do not consider this la, this no, to be considered mahdhuf, because if it was, then it would break the rhyme pattern. It would be wala uh, uh, fa ya'tadiru. So we do not call it mahdhuf, rather we say it is i'tibaran, it is just understood. Therefore, fayatavirun. So this is a little details for those, those of you that are uh, interested in these types of things. And it's interesting here that they want to give excuses. They're not even given per permission to give excuses, but the fact of the matter is, even in reality, if they were given permission, they wouldn't have any excuses. They don't have any. All the evidence is against them. Ends them. So subhanAllah, uh, uh, just that in of itself. You know, oh, I want the permission to give excuses. You don't have any excuses anyhow. So no permission, nor do you have anything, subhanAllah. And on Judgment Day, we should realize that there will be a time there will be, like we said, a, 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 a trial period where people can speak. And I've talked about this before. There's many different ayat where Allah Ta'ala mentions the different ways people try to get out of their impending doom, uh, their judgment. You know, whether it be, you know, qalu wallahi rabbina ma kunna mushrikeen, whether they swear, I swear by Allah, our Lord, Ya Allah, I swear I was never a mushrik, they'll just straight up deny. Or it could be that they give excuses and Allah is saying, Ya ayhu ladhina kafaru la ta'tadiru al-yawm, O you who have disbelieved, don't give any excuses today. It could be that they think they're going to argue their way out of their judgment. Allah says, يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُجَادِلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهَا 
on the day when every soul will come to dispute uh, for itself. So they think, that, oh, maybe I can argue my way out. Maybe I can lie my way out. Maybe uh, I can give excuses. Or maybe I could blame it on somebody else. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ مَوْقُوفُونَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يَرْجِعُ بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ الْقَوْلِ Allah says, but if you, only you could see when the wrongdoers are made to stand before their Lord, refuting each other's words. Maybe I could blame, no, it's his fault, no, it's his fault. No, they're back and forth, back and forth, blaming each other. They think this is going to work. SubhanAllah, may Allah protect us. Or they maybe even blame God. SubhanAllah, imagine this mentality where you think you can blame Allah Ta'ala for your misguidance. As Allah says, وَقَالُوا لَوْ شَاءَ الرَّحْمَنُ مَا عَبَدْنَاهُمْ they will say on Judgment Day, if the Most Merciful had willed, or this could be on Judgment Day, or it could just be in life. But the disbelievers will say, if the Most Merciful had willed, we would never have worshipped those idols. We would have never have worshipped them, subhanAllah. Just lying and saying, oh, it was God's fault. That's the reason I am the way I am. And by the way, people make all of these excuses. It wasn't my fault, it was my family, it was somebody else's fault. No, no, I have excuses. No, no, really, it's God's fault. People do stuff like this all the time. All these ayat, subhanAllah, I can think back into my own history and think, oh, I remember someone saying this, saying this, saying this. They're so relevant, subhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala knows His creatures and knows exactly the excuses we make. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from being those who delude ourselves into thinking that these excuses will work. And some think that they can appease. You know when somebody's upset, you just kind of try to calm them down, say, what can I do for you? How can I fix it now? What can I do to make it better? They want to appease you. Allah says, لا يؤذن للذين كفروا ولاهم يستعتبون. Allah says, it will not be permitted to the disbeliever to apologize or make excuses, nor to try to appease Allah. As if to say, after the test, give me another test. Let me do something now to fix what I've done before. It's not going to work. Or finally, they'll think, let me just give me another chance. Send me back, I'll redo the test one more time. As they say, رَبَّنَا أَبَصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا إِنَّا مُوقِنُونَ They will say, our Lord, we have seen and heard, so return us to the world. We will work, we will work righteousness. Indeed, we are now certain. Give me a, give me a second, chance, second chance. Let me do the test over again. No, there's no redos. Because obviously, guys, if there was a redo, what do you think you would do? If you failed it, you just say, give me another redo. You, you gave it to me the first time. Why not the second time, and the third time, and the fourth time? You get, you get the point? Like, that, it creates a pattern that every time I fail, I just ask for a redo, right? It's already happened before. No, it doesn't work like that. Another really important point here that is important to anybody who gives da'wah, anybody involved in talking to non-Muslims about Islam, which we all should be. We live amongst non-Muslims. We live in a non-Muslim majority. We should be having conversations to whatever capacity we can. Anybody who does, anybody who's involved in da'wah knows how often they get interrupted knows how often people will offer bad faith arguments. You know, you're, they're arguing in a way where you say, you say to yourself, this is not, this is not a sincere argument. You're not, you don't really believe this. You're just saying this just to try to win a point. You're just saying this to try to, you know, shut me down. Or it's disingenuous. Or you interrupt a lot. Or filibustering. Filibustering is when the person just talks and talks and talks and drains the whole time. Like we know we're going to sit down for coffee for let's say one hour. The guy says, let me tell you my story. He takes up 55 minutes with his time. You have five minutes to make your case. You're like, man, you just drained the whole clock, right? This is called filibustering. So subhanAllah, anybody involved in da'wah, I'm sure you've experienced tons of this. I'm going to assume you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And Allah Ta'ala is saying what? You're not going to have the ability to do any of this nonsense. So yes, yeah, subhanAllah, people who make insincere arguments about Allah Ta'ala think nothing of it. They think they use all these bad arguments, bad faith arguments, interruptions, these ugly type of tactics, and they think, oh, that's fine. Now that that's, gl glad that's over, whew, and they just sort of wipe their forehead and walk away, think it's all over. SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is going to catch you for all of this. Why? Because the Prophet says, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مَا يَتَبَيَّنُ مَا فِيهَا يَهْوِ بِهَا فِي النَّارِ أَبْعَدَ مَا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ a slave, a servant of God, may utter a single word, thinking it's nothing, no repercussions, not giving it any thought. And because of it, he'll fall down into the fire, the distance equal to that between the east and the west. You have no idea, with one evil word, you're speaking about Allah Ta'ala, you're saying lies about Allah. Maybe you convince somebody, maybe you send that person astray. And you think, oh, I just defended, you know, whatever false religion is out there. And oh, I did a good job, and I just, you know, I, I mentioned this, mentioned that, kind of dodge this point, dodge that point. Brothers and sisters, we should be actively involved in da'wah. You should be at the forefront of this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then there's a big problem. You guys should be very well aware of what I'm talking about. And just imagine the disbeliever on that day building up a defense case in their minds, thinking, no, no, I know it's judgment day, I'm really nervous, I'm sweating, I'm scared, but you know what, I have a big defense for myself. But each time it's time to actually speak and argue, he tries to make a point, but the base assumption that he's making it on is false. 
So many times you hear people make arguments, but the, the whole grounding upon which the argument is made is false. So immediately they get stopped, no. What are you basing that on? What is that based on? And, and they, they can't make the argument unless it's true. So they get caught, oh, okay, oh, I have to re reformulate it, reformulate it, and they have to keep on trying to say it the true way, because any falsehood just won't get out. Can you imagine this? And they realize that when they draw it all the way back to the, their primary base assumptions, they're all false, subhanAllah. It's a very scary thing, and they just get dismantled because the fact is, so many people, if you guys are involved in da'wah, well, you know, there are so many people who base so much of their arguments on pure lies. There are many ayats that are related to this. Allah Ta'ala leaves no excuses for the disbeliever. As Allah says, Allah says, we sent messengers as people who bring good news and who give warnings so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers. This is exactly the point of bringing Al-Anbiya. You will have no argument after the Anbiya. All the Anbiya come and they spread the truth and the believers, uh, you know, an nabiyin as siddiqeen right? as siddiqeen affirm the truth and push it further and spread that message. Now, obviously, if the message keeps getting spread more and more and more, there's going to reach uh, opposition. That's why Allah says, an nabiyin as siddiqeen and then as shuhada Why? Because the opposition is going to try to kill you. But obviously, if the believers keep fighting and eventually they win, then society is made peaceful. And that's why the fourth one is as salihin That's what, I hope you guys paid attention in Surah, uh, Surah Nisa, ayah number 69, where Allah Ta'ala says, an nabiyin as siddiqeen as shuhada wa salihin Even the order of these four, they represent how wahi comes first, the, the most truthful uh, believe in it and spread the message even more. Opposition rises up against them. People fight and die, shuhada. And then finally the shuhada, or the, 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 the mujahideen, the fighters, they eventually win. And then when they win, as salihin then uh, the land becomes righteous. Anyway, moving on, Allah also says what? وَلَوْ أَنَّا أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِهِ لَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَوْ لَا أَرْسَلْتَ إِلَيْنَا رَسُولًا فَنَتَّبِعَ آيَاتِكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَذِلَّ وَنَخْزَى Allah says, and if we had destroyed them with a punishment before him, they would have said, Our Lord, why did you not send to us a messenger so we could have followed your verses before we were humiliated and disgraced? So Allah Ta'ala specifically says, I send messengers so that you have no excuse whatsoever. You won't be able to say, why were we killed? Why were we punished before we even knew the truth? Uh, and then finally, Allah Ta'ala says, وَيْلُ يَوْمَ إِذِلْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Wo, ayah number 37. Woe on that, day, on that day to the deniers. So based on this section, it seems that it's implying what? Woe to those who deny the day in which lies, excuses, exaggerations, deception, omission, omissions, slick talking, none of it will benefit you. None of these things that you rely upon in life to get by, to get the promotion, to get the girl, to get the, I don't know, to win the argument, all these things, you know, little tricks you have. Some people are very good at this stuff. Some people are very deceptive and clever and intelligent and they get what they want with just slick words. And subhanAllah, Allah is saying, none of this is going to benefit you on that day. The Prophet ﷺ emphasizes truthfulness so much. Woe to him who, woe to the one who tells, says something, tells, spe uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, gives a... Uh, narrates different stories or whatever the case is, speaking falsely to make people laugh, just to make people laugh through it. In other words, you exaggerate and embellish stories, you lie, why? Just to be entertaining. Woe to that person, woe to that person, woe to him, subhanAllah. So we should be very careful. Abu Ma'mar, he, he narrates, قام رجل يثني على أمير من الأمراء. A person, one time he started praising, uh, you could say, uh, what's it called, uh, when somebody, uh, Sycophant, uh, overly praising, you know, uh, um, um, suck up. Yeah, what's, what, whatever. There's another term for it. I'm, I'm not remembering it, but you know the term. Basically, somebody's sucking up to somebody and overly pra flattering. That's the term I'm looking for. You know, flattering them and going in, into detail. And then, so what happens? He did this uh, to one of the emirs, to one of the umara. فَجَعَلَ الْمِقْدَادِ يَحْثِي عَلَيْهِ التُرَابِ So Miqdad began to throw dust or dirt in his face. Can you imagine? This guy picks up dirt, chucks it right in the guy's face. Can you imagine the guy getting blasted in the eyes? Like, oh my God. Can you imagine how painful that is? And so embarrassing in front of everybody. And then uh, uh, he mentions, وَقَالْ أَمَرَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ نَحْثِيَ فِي وُجُوهِ الْمَدَّاحِينَ التُرَابِ That he said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, commanded us that we should throw dust upon the faces of those who sh shower too much praise upon people. 
Madh Madh means to praise somebody. Maddahin, yani the people who praise too much. The overly embellishing exaggerators. You don't, don't, we, are, we should be very careful not to enjoy the lies of people. Oh, you're so amazing and you're this and you're that. Even if, it's, if it feels good, you should be the type of person that says, listen, if you keep going, I'm going to scoop up some dirt and <laughs> chuck it at you. Don't do that. This is how dangerous the ego is. The Prophet says, alaykum bi sidq. Speak the truth. فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقْ صِدْقْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرْ وَإِنَّ الْبِرْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Because truth leads to virtue and virtue leads to paradise. وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَسْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّى الصِّدْقْ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا That and a man will continue to speak the truth and he will keep on searching and endeavoring to tell the truth and to seek out the truth till eventually they are recorded as truthful with Allah Ta'ala. This is how important it is to be an honest person and to seek out the truth and to always endeavor to speak the truth so you get recorded with Allah Ta'ala as truthful. And how do you know when something is true versus false? SubhanAllah, the Prophet gave a very beautiful and comprehensive uh, uh, statement which is uh, narrated by uh, Imam, uh, it's, it's part of the Arba'in and Nawi, part of the, you could say, most comprehensive hadith. And uh, these are, this is the one what? Leave what makes you in doubt for that which does not give you any doubt. Truth brings tranquility, while falsehood sows doubt and discomfort. So whenever you feel your heart kind of uncomfortable with something, that probably wasn't true. The moment you tell the truth like it is and you, kind of, oh, you have that sort of moment of relaxation, you could breathe easy, that's when you know this, you, you spoke the truth. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are always speaking the truth. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.